think how you got here. You know, you crossed a Roman road, you walked across the fields surrounding the Priory of St Mary's Spittle, which was a hospital to welcome the stranger. And we wouldn't be here without our friends at, at London Book and Screen Week and London Book Fair, who have been wonderful partners and encouraged us to do this. This is our first event of this kind, so it's absolutely thrilling. When I came here when I was 17 years old with my politics class for, for an AS level trip, um, all of a sudden I felt like I was a part of a, a greater narrative, a story that was a very British story, and all of a sudden I felt like I was home. And so it was a very pivotal um, time for me to come to this, to this building and find out more about myself, and, and it's just such an amazing place to be. Bang, bang, I'll shoot you down. Bang, bang, he, she, they, I hit the ground. Can you hear that? That resonant shot, if only I could blot it out of my memory. Crazy, some people call me crazy. I can still feel that bullet pierce my skin, shatter my flesh, and then rest as though in solitude just above my gut. I call that rude. <coughs> Your boyfriend asked you to live with his parents and a hole in the wall, asked Brammers. Yes. Emma pushed back the fringe, her fringe. Your boyfriend wanted you to move in with him and his parents and a what? <laughs> Trust me to go and get a career in quite possibly the most white-centric middle-class industry there is. I explained to the confused faces about the conjoined houses, living with the in-laws, and of course the hole that holds the entire story together. After I'd explained about common Asian practice, not only did I feel like a black sheep, but I would have quite liked to be a sheep. Sheep are not judged. <laughs> <laughs> not all New York are pretty much interchangeable cities, they're global cities. Whereas, um, you know, Wolverhampton is not interchangeable with anything. Uh, uh, I realise that actually a lot of my signs are actually about London. For example, I'm not going to read all of them out. Um, the opening of a, of a new Tesco's is a cause for celebration, not despair, right? In Wolverhampton it's a brilliant thing, whereas in London it's terrible. They're in a restaurant. The Edwardian dining room with its crystal mouldings and Bouchkaresque murals was designed to dazzle, but Sorinda was more taken back by details regular diners would have considered banal. Tablecloth starched and ironed to cardboard stiffness. People scooping soup from bowls and smooth outward movements sipping from the sides of spoons. On the table next to her, a lady was wiping her plate with a piece of bread, which itself was on the end of a fork. <laughs> While straight opposite, a man was eating a banana with a knife and fork. These white people were, it seems, do anything not to touch their food with their hands. <laughs> Language is important. Years before, I sat in an Indian restaurant round the corner from where we live. It's called, oh, Calcutta! I found the exclamation mark alarming. The place was owned by a white, white guy. One of the dishes listed was chicken chuggy, described as an exotic blend of... I got the early laughs, so I think... I it was good. Uh, described as an exotic blend of authentic spices, tomatoes and peppers. It sounded so generic. What was an exotic blend? What were ex authentic spices? Also, tomato and pepper. These were, the, these were the biggest tastemakers, apart from chicken in the dish. What is chicken chuggy? Also, chubby means pants. <laughs> I felt mortified for the white guy owner. He probably had been duped by some guy he'd asked for a word that sounded Eastern. Maybe the chef was having a laugh with him. Maybe he was having a joke at his clients. But now we had white guys aping the food we made, made to fit in with the white guys and calling it pants. <laughs> I called the manager over. I think we'll discover something new and make a new friend this evening and share your stories and hear other people's stories as well. Thank you for coming.